Hey everyone, me Kevin here. We've got a big update from Goldman Sachs on Tesla, price targets from Tesla. We're gonna go test the spreadsheet and I'm gonna give you an update on what the heck happened to my short position on Tesla. Because yes, last week I was short, but I closed that position right before the market closed on Thursday. I'll give you an update later in this video on what's going on. So, and remember, you always get buy sell alerts if you're a member of the Stocks and Psychology and Money Group, everything I do with my stocks of portfolio and trading portfolio. So, first, let's go start with Goldman Sachs and give a shout out to Troy Teslike. If you haven't seen it yet, I don't wanna give away his IP. I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna shout him out. He has his latest estimates out on Twitter uh, and he links to his Patreon. I'm a member of his Patreon, it's like five bucks a month. He's a good guy. Uh, I've invited him on for an interview, but he's also a very private guy. <clears throat> so I respect that, I respect his privacy. But I will say, he's been very good with estimating numbers for Tesla deliveries. And let's just say he, in the last eight days, has reduced his estimate <clears throat> once again. We are now down from his last estimate, another about 1.7%. So uh, the trend is down and it's a good chunk below what analysts are expecting. I'll suggest that, um, it's about 12% less than what analysts are expecting. And that depends on which analyst expectations you use. Again, not trying to give it away. But the point is, Troy's data, not great. I am also losing my voice a little bit. Sorry about that. So, Troy's data is not great. We know that. But we've got to look at Goldman Sachs. Then, after we look at Goldman Sachs, I want to touch on something regarding Tesla and NVIDIA. And I want to sort of run this scenario by you. I don't think anybody's really talking about this. And I want your opinion on it. I think it's a really important thing to consider as a Tesla investor. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me. Oh my gosh, it's so annoying <laughs> to be sick. <laughs> but take a look at this. So here, they suggest that delivery estimates in key regions uh, per their third party sources are suggesting that the first two months of the quarter are up high single digits year over year. High single digits would be, let's say, 7%. And in the first quarter last year, we did about 423,000 deliveries. So let's add about 7, 8%. That put us around 452, 456. But they say they're down low double digits quarter on quarter. Well, that would put you around 426. So you're somewhere between 426 and 456. And last year, Q1, we did about 423. So let's go generous and go 456. Divide that into the 423 of last year. Puts us on the growth trajectory of about 7%. It's not just Q1 though. If we get a second quarter in a row of 7% growth, it starts creating a trend. The market's going to be a little disappointed by that, I believe. I think there's a risk factor of that. Now, Goldman Sachs is lowering their forecast for Q1 to 435,000. They are moving their 2024 vehicle deliveries target to 1.98 million. That would represent annual growth of roughly 1.98 divided by the previous 9.3%. So they're at about 9.3% growth. Either way, we're a far cry from obviously the back in the day 50% growth rate. I've always been underwriting Tesla at a longer run 30% growth rate. So seeing these numbers coming in in the seven to nine percent range, it's not great. And right now there's no indication that we're actually gonna be able to escape seven to nine percent growth and, the, and sort of the anchor that is seven to nine percent growth for a period of time. That's a little bit concerning to me. In addition to the fact that year to date, year over year app downloads are actually down year over year. That's not great. So I want you to look at this. Here were peak deliveries for Tesla. Q3 2023. And if you align that peak with app downloads, we could actually see app downloads in the US trending back down to levels we kind of saw over here, which would be roughly Q1 of last year. So maybe it's seasonal. Who knows? That could be good. Take a screenshot of that if you'd like. That's from Sensor Tower app downloads. I thought that was a very interesting sort of point out. But what they mentioned here is, we believe that Tesla is being impacted by reduced EV subsidies in Europe, the Red Sea conflict that's affecting shipments going into Europe, competition in China, especially with BYD, and slower demand overall than had previously been expected by Goldman Sachs analysts. As a result, they come to a total projection of, for 2026, 
2.75 million vehicles. Okay, well this isn't fantastic because let's jump over here. I want you to see, we're gonna do some price targeting here, but first I want you to understand this. So let's say we're at you know, 1.81 million deliveries. We're gonna grow that by 20% per year, right? Let's say 20% instead of 30. <clears throat> okay, fine. 20% per year gets us to about 2.2 and 25, 2.6 and 26, 3.1 and 27. Okay, well, what, the, what is their trajectory? They're looking at 2.75 in, let's take a look at it. 2.75 uh, down from 3 million in 2026. Okay, so let's go back, make sure we're doing this math right. <clears throat> so this is the 2023 number, 2024, 25, ah, 26, sorry. That would be 3.12 million in 26. So Goldman is actually lower than that. They're probably at about 15%. Let's go with 15%. Yeah, 2.75. So they're at 15% compounded, right? 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, we're doing the math right. 2.75 compounded, <clears throat> or, or to get to 2.75, you compound a 15% growth rate. That's their target. Maybe Tesla will wildly beat it. And if that happens, obviously we would expect the stock to do very, very well. So let's enter full screen here and go into here. Let's say the average revenue per vehicle is $44,000. Let's go with their estimate of 2.75, which I think is really low and disappointing. We're gonna leave everything else the same. Lease is 2%, service is 5%, energy 10%, FSD, I'm gonna go with 2.5%. That'd be $3 billion a year. We're not, we're not even seeing that right now, but I'm just gonna leave it in there. I don't wanna change too much. I'm gonna go with the 25% margin. We'll come back and we'll adjust that in a moment. What does that get us to at a 19% tax rate? That gets us to $6.43 of earnings in 2026, which at a 25 times multiple. How do you get that? You multiply a 15% growth rate by 1.67. You get a price target of $160 in, unfortunately, two and a half years, like 2.75 years, right? The end of 2026. So let me drop this to 2.75 years. That's about a negative 9% expected return over the next 2.75 years. <clears throat> That's not great. That's a 25% margin. Now, if I go over here and I move this to just uh, a 20% margin, so the expense is, uh, uh, you know, 20%, uh, sorry, the expenses are 80% rather than 75%. So we are putting in our pocket 20 cents out of every dollar as opposed to 25 out of every dollar. I'm making the margin worse. We're worsening the margin by 5%. If I worsen the margin on every vehicle by 5%, we actually go down to about $124 per share. This is on a 2026 basis using a PE of 25 with 15% growth. So this is a growth company. It requires growth. So you can have all the margin you want in the world, but if you don't have growth, it's a problem. Now let's do a little bit more of a generous move. Let's go with the 20% growth target. So let's go with the 3.1. We'll go 3.1 million, 25% margin. And now we're gonna have a 20% growth factor so we can actually move our PE ratio up. Our PE that we're gonna go with is 20 times 1.67. That puts us at about $242 by the end of 2026, if we can get 20% growth. <clears throat> that means, ah, sorry, I forgot the present value. I didn't update the present value. Present value is like 173. There we go. That gives you about a 13% annual rate of return compounded. Now, because I forgot to change the present value, I will quickly show you the 15% version. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's change this to the worst case scenario for margin. Oops. There we go, expenses 80. Puts you about 187, or a growth of about 3%. So like really good scenarios, getting back to 20% growth, which I think would require really, really low interest rates again to get to, let's, let's say we cut rates to zero tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow, interest rates is zero again. How many, how much growth do we get at Tesla again? Honestly, I think probably back to 30%. <clears throat> but we're not gonna go to zero tomorrow. So let's say we go to 2.5% tomorrow. What do we get? Maybe then we'll get our 20% growth, 20, 30% growth, maybe. But we're not going to these low rates anytime soon. The Fed's barely interested right now in cutting at all. I think the earliest we're gonna see a cut is July, and they're kinda gonna just slowly kick the can down the road on us. 
That's my opinion. Obviously, if your opinion is different and you think inflation is falling more rapidly, that's fine. <clears throat> that was my belief as well. Unfortunately, the last three months of data, the facts have changed. And, and I think it would be delusional to think that we're going to get massive vehicle growth over the next two years. I wish it were different. But let's change some numbers anyway. Let's, let's see what the bull case scenario would be like, okay? So let's go with 2027, okay? We're going to multiply this by another 20% times 1.2, 3.72. So this is a more bull case scenario. And yes, I'm purposefully leaving out some of the icing on the cake. Dojo licensing, more FSD licensing. I've already got FSD revenue in here of $4 billion, right? At 95% margin. Sorry, at 98% uh, margin. So I think I'm already being very generous. Uh, anyway, let's say they get back to 25% uh, on the uh, the margin. And uh, we're growing then at 20% for 2026 now. That gives us 3.75 years. That gives me a future price target of almost $300. Which what's interesting is if you go to the target over here on Goldman, they give you the bear case and the bull case. They think the bull case scenario over the next two years could be $300. They think the bear case scenario, though, could be $65 to $85, which unfortunately is where Tesla has some technical trends. <clears throat> now, I think it'd be a pretty glorious buy if it got that low. But the question is, I think people riding out a Tesla portfolio right now, somebody who has, let's say, $100,000 in Tesla, you have to say to yourself, if we went down to 65, do you have the capacity to keep buying? Because you're about to see potentially a 63% drawdown, which means if you had $100,000 and you go down 63%, you're left with $37,000. I mean, that's like the bear scenario there. Obviously, the hope is that <clears throat> we get that 300 number, but I don't know that we can get that in the 300 number when the facts are telling us to our face that right now, best case scenario, let's look at the best case scenario growth again. And then I wanna to talk to you about this NVIDIA uh, idea that I have. So they think 2.75 million by 2026, maybe rates will actually be lower then, but uh, they also give you some growth rates over here. 9.3%, well, that's not good. Do we have anything good here? <clears throat> let's see, Q1 volumes. I mean, honestly, even if you get 450 or four call it 460,000 deliveries because we're going to talk about that price increase in a moment. Let's say you get 460, divide that by 423 ish, it's about 8.7 percent growth. We're nowhere near even 15 percent growth, we're not even breaking 10 percent growth, so we're less than 10 percent growth right now with the actual data. Troy's numbers, Goldman's numbers, the street analyst numbers are coming down. Now, the stock is obviously up, and we're going to talk about that short position. So the stock's up. Why is the stock up? Well, it's because we had a $1,000 price increase on the vehicles this weekend. <clears throat> and we have FSD, 12.3. I have to say, I didn't like 12.1, 12.2 that much. 12.3, I love it. It's very good. It's very, very good. I don't have anything bad to say about it. It has fixed some of the nonsense of the early versions of the 12s. So very good job. $1,000 price increase, good. Now, this could be one of two things. One, demand is high. That's probably not that. Number two, it's a trick. It's a manipulation to say, hey, buy this quarter because the numbers are so bad that we will do whatever we can just prop up the quarter one more quarter <clears throat> because we got a problem. We need to pull forward some demand. Maybe things will be better in the second quarter is the hope. And so they're trying to signal a price bottom for Tesla's get people to rush in and buy before prices go up. It's possible. I mean, after all, we think there's a good chance we're going to end up getting to doubling the prices on our event in Vegas, real estate seminar. Uh, I'll teach you everything I know about real estate, how House Hack is buying. We'll be presenting with the whole House Hack team as well. Uh, innovation, finance, you name it. Go to meetkevin.com to learn more. So yeah, there are like that. That is a strategy. Now, I think that works for us because we're providing more value. We're giving you more speakers and more clarity on everything that's being done, the venue, everything. So as we release more value, the price goes up. Anyway, in this case, you're trying to signal a bottom. I think it's 
mostly a trick. Uh, however, it, it can have the third consequence of signaling a bottom. So it's not a bad strategy. That combined with FSD 12.3 led to a little bit of a move in the stock today. Quite a bit. It was up like 5, 5 to 6% or something like that. Now we'll talk about short. Talk about two things here. First, I want to talk to you about NVIDIA. And then I want to talk to you about short. All right. So somebody left a comment. And I, I think they're intelligent. They said, hey, you know, Tesla's way ahead in terms of the data they've collected for their vehicles. Who else is collecting data on vehicles? And <clears throat> they haven't even gone through FSD version 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm. Yes. Yes, this is true. Well, I have a question for you. And, and this is a legitimate question, especially for you computer scientists out there. Tesla uh, FSD 1 to 11 was coded, right? So it's AI plus thousands of lines of code, tens of thousands of lines of, of code, right? Tesla 12 is all neural net. So in other words, Tesla took data and trained it within the last year. So what did Tesla do in the last year? Well, they bought a bunch of H100 chips from Nvidia. They bought 10,000 H100 chips, and then Elon Musk started poo-pooing on Dojo in the last earnings call. That kind of pissed me off because I'm like, bro, why are you poo-pooing on your stuff? Is, is it really just not that good? I mean, we know we got the B100s now that we're competing with too, but it, it felt a little defeatist. I think Elon took a little bit of a negative point of view. But the point is, I want you to think of this. What if Tesla 12 is actually really Tesla FSD 1.0 neural net, okay? Well, then what separates a company, let's call it company Z, okay? What separates company Z from getting to FSD 1.0? Well, 10,000 H100s, right? But it's not just that, it's the data, right? We need uh, geographical data, Geographically uh, diverse data, uh, vehicle diversity, uh, driver diversity to get an average. You know, you don't want to train based off, you know, a few people because if they have bad habits, those all get trained in. You want to try to take the best of everything, right? So what if there was a company, Company Z, that had the data and we haven't been paying attention to it? Well, if they had the data, can they not also train an FSD 1.0 very rapidly? Yeah, they probably could, which means Tesla's lead, which maybe Tesla will end up being at, you know, 1.7 by that time. I don't know. Maybe they'll even be at 2.0. The point is the lead that appears to be there for Tesla FST starts to shrink. Well, what's a company that has already partnered with Volvo... Mercedes, BYD, already today in automotive drive technology. It's also a company that used to be partnered with Tesla. What company does this? And what company is openly saying, openly saying they're going to compete with Tesla by Q1 2025 in FST? You should know by now because I literally teased it. NVIDIA. I wrote it right there. <laughs> <coughs> I want to hear your comments on this. So this is me transparently thinking. I do think Tesla has a massive advantage. But I do wonder, is that advantage declining? Because remember this. They said that it would take a GPT uh, or, or to training a GPT would take 90 days on the H100. Training a GPT would take 90 days with one fourth the compute with the B100. In other words, to get to that same level of FSD1, it's going to be even easier to train faster with the latest chips. So your ability to catch up is accelerating. <sighs> Just sucks. Okay. 
And then obviously you got the Fed. Now, I said we talk short. Let's talk short. I'm gonna be transparent here. So, on Thursday, uh, around 12.50 p.m., I closed my short. Uh, I'm up about 30K on that option in 24 hours. That was cool. Took tendies. Simple. Uh, I thought there would be a tactical bounce on Monday, on Friday. Got it. We got the bounce Friday. Then what happened? Well, over the weekend, we got two sets of news. 1K up and FSD 12.3, which I got as well. And it is good. Okay? Be transparent here. So what happened after we got that? Well, not only did we have bounce Friday, we had basically a rally Monday, which is great. But now that news is here. We have the news. And where are we stuck? We're really stuck at a 175 resistance. Now, is it possible that we can break out of the 175? Absolutely. It's absolutely possible. However, what does the market start pricing in tomorrow? The Fed meeting. At least at the time of this recording, NASDAQ futures are down. Negative 24% uh, basis points. It's probably in part because of a buy the rumor, sell the news on NVIDIA. But going into the Fed meeting, I am nervous. So, when I saw Tesla up 5 to 6% today, I shorted it again. So I am short again. But I was not short when it went up on Friday. And I was not short when it went up this morning. I did go short and then it kind of went up a little bit more. But that's like a 10% shift, 10 to 13% shift in value. Uh, which on short-term options isn't that big of a deal. But um, we'll see. I'm not optimistic about the Fed meeting. So I'm actually playing a triple short. Uh, I'm calling it a triple short strategy. One of them uh, of this triple short strategy. I'll be transparent uh, about, well, you know one of them. One of them is Tesla. Uh, <clears throat> I have another short. And I'm going to make a video on uh, this one tomorrow. So we're going to call this one the, uh, uh, it's a three to four beta on the market. And so I'm short this particular stock because it's up against some pretty severe resistance. And I think it's, there's a really good opportunity on this and I'll reveal that one tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll give you a heads up on this one. Now I did on the idea of a buy the rumor, sell the news. I went short arm. So I have a triple short strategy. Uh, their, uh, their options. And uh, yeah, that's a full transparent update on everything that's going on. So we got Troy Tesla, like, check him out on Twitter. We've got Goldman Sachs. We've got this update on what, what, where my positioning is because I want to be transparent. We have my thoughts about what could happen with uh, FSD and competition. I still think Tesla is way ahead of everybody else. I do think there's a chance that NVIDIA actually is collecting way more on the road data than, than we can even imagine right now. And they're probably already running way more sims than we think. So I'm bearish. And I'm also using the signal of, quite frankly, Bitcoin as, as another sign. Let me show you what's happening with Bitcoin right now. Sorry, Ed. I really need to get a switch for this. There we go. I have, um, I have to unplug this HDMI and I just need to get a little button. And then I have to replug it in to do certain things. It's very inconvenient, but I will fix that. Uh, this is what I want to show you. It's my Windows computer. I actually really like it. <laughs> Everything else is Mac. But here's my Windows computer. So I've been tracking Bitcoin. And uh, as you can see, we're having serious problems at that uh, 69 Fibby. But we're also getting a uh, you know downtrend that I, I have marked on my Mac. I guess it doesn't transfer over here. But I'm tracking this downtrend right here. And uh, this is not great. We're getting a little bit of, uh, you know, can you, can you potentially draw, you know, something like this? I mean, clearly we just broke out of it, so it doesn't really matter much. But we have some issues here. This is pretty messy. But I don't know if there are inflows left for the ETFs or why this is happening. Personally, I'm sure there's, there are plenty of inflows left. But I think what this is is a little bit of a risk-off trade after uh, or in anticipation of the Federal Reserve. That's my take on this. 
And so the downtrend has somewhat begun. There is a potential fourth short position that I'm going to take tomorrow, and it's related to Bitcoin. And obviously with all my alerts, I send the, the buy sell alerts in the Stocks and Psychology Money Group. You get access to the course member live streams every morning as well. And uh, you get full disclosure on those trades. So look forward to seeing you there. And uh, if you want to use Weeble, go to metkevin.com slash Weeble. Check out the link down below. It's right next to the link for life insurance. You can get as little as five minutes. And appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts. We'll see you soon. Good luck and goodbye. Advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.